Well, we got a pretty fun time here today. I have the pups from Luna and Pretty Boy Leaf. They're give or take two weeks old today. And uh, absolutely amazing dogs. Just amazing. It's really... something. This is, this is one of the big males. Look at this guy. Look at how thick and solid and how good this big boy is. Oh, what a good boy. What a good boy. What are you doing, buddy? What are you doing? That's my boy. That's my boy. You're going to stay with me, aren't you, buddy? Oh, boy. Now, I got another litter right beside us. I have Luna's brother's litter, Mons, Mon and Kalia, right there. And this is Leaf and Luna. Oh, that's my boy. That's my good boy. That's my good boy. Now, this was Luna's first litter, and uh, she ran into a little snag. She had uh, she had a breach when she was having the litter, and we had to take her into the vet, and we had to uh, give her some assistance there. One of the pups was coming backwards with one foot um, caught, and so we were unable to save two of the pups. So she ended up with three out of the five. And uh, Beth did everything she could, but we just uh, weren't able to do it. So uh, <clears throat> we ended up with this big male. This is the other big male. Look at this guy. Black as the ace of spades, boy. What a good boy. <clears throat> That's my buddy. That's my buddy. <clears throat> Magnificent fella. Oh, my goodness. And my big girl. There's my big girl. There's my big girl. Yeah, this is my big girl. Look at that girl. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So these are magnificent pups. Unbelievable. Just eat and sleep, eat and sleep. <clears throat> now, both these females are big females and they milk. So these pups are growing to capacity. They're going to be enormous pups. Now, I want to share a couple of things with you. I had wanted to talk a little bit about the heritage of these pups. We're a, a working Alcon preservation breeder. So a lot of our lines are very old. And by old I mean uh, this, this set of pups for example, can trace back to the very founding females of the Norwegian um, Elk Hound Association. So you could literally take dog, 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 dog all the way back right to some of the founding females. And uh, these are very, very uh, traceable, very old genetics. Now, I'm not going to tell you that there's not some brand new rock stars in here either because there is. Now, um, as a preservation breeder, we, uh, we try to preserve working lines. And so when I say working lines, I mean they have to be proven hunters and they have to be uh, uh, from good hunting lines. They have to be skilled hunting dogs. So what we want to uh, look at in the background of these dogs is in Scandinavia they test all those dogs and they can 
they can uh, work toward their championship and there is just loaded with hunting champions in the background of these dogs so they're very very skilled very very good dogs they've got all the instincts intact now I had a lady called she's waiting on um, a pup from one of the sisters of the mother of this litter and uh, she's been following the site for a long time watching the dogs grow up and she literally watched the grandmother of this dog grow up on my videos she watched the mother of this litter and the sister grow up on videos and so she's been following along for many many years and uh, anyway due to the delay in time between when that litter was born and when they really wanted the pup they had thought okay they'll just inquire a little bit and see if some other breeders potentially had had some pups come sooner. Now they they were able to find some sooner but they were disappointed potentially by the quality but uh, it wasn't necessarily that it was some comments that were made and because we're in Canada we're a working breeder we don't show our dogs we're not in the show uh, system we don't we don't like to show dogs we don't we don't have any any skill in that we raise all working dogs so anyway uh, one of the questions that uh, one of the breeders posed to this lady was well how, how do you know they're good and the lady said well um, one video would tell you what kind of quality they've got but if you go and look at uh, all of the videos and watch these dogs grow up and listen to what he's talking about you'll get an idea of the quality but I thought you know what I'm just going to touch on that particular subject because it is important for somebody that's coming from a great distance to know okay is it just my opinion that the dogs are good or is it you know maybe somebody else's opinion because yes let's face it I am doing the videos so people can see my dogs and yes of course I got a fat head about my dogs but what do other people think right so I thought well this particular I'll, I'll use this big fella right here this guy so in North America the biggest show that we have that happens every year that shows dogs so that they're judged and they're judged based on their breed standard the closest ideal to the breed standard that show is the Westminster dog show now the other night I was just watching it and I was watching the Norwegian elk hound uh, breed group and I watched the hound group of course because that's where the elk hounds are now as many of you know the judges there are some of the very best in the world now I don't know exactly how they all get picked to go and represent the breed but this much I know is that the elk hounds that represent uh, the Norwegian elk hound breed at Westminster are the very best that can be presented and they're usually the very best that is available in North America now I don't know if any of you follow that or not but there's a separate show for, to determine the, the best of breed so all of the outcomes that are presented at Westminster they have a show and the best of breed wins that spot 
that dog then goes on to compete with the hound group with all the other breeds and compete against all of the other entries in the hound group to win best of hound. But what happens at a show like that is it takes years and years and years of dedication and judging and you, there, there's no bad dogs in that show, put it that way. They're all the very best that can be presented. And they're all judged by the best judges to get there. It just so happens that while I'm sitting out here with this litter and going back and forth watching the show, that this, this is how good these dogs are is that out of the, I think it was 18 elk hounds selected to represent the Norwegian elk hounds, their grandfather was one of those 18. <laughs> it's, it, it's pretty profound when you think about it because um, the father of these pups, that was his dad. Okay, he was representing the outcomes there. Now here's the really, really cool thing is the great-grandfather. So the father of these guys, his dad and his dad, those two males <clears throat> direct, this, direct connected to these guys through the father of these guys who's standing outside. That's representing the very best of the Norwegian elk hounds there is in North America. And guess who wins best of breed? Yes, the great grandfather of these guys at nine and a half years old. Now that's pretty profound. To win in a category of all the best elk hounds at nine and a half, we're talking some seriously good dog. Now, hats off to the breeders that raise those dogs. Hats off to uh, the work, the dedication, the effort, the time, uh, the care, the conditioning to keep. I saw that <clears throat> dog going around the ring, that, that old boy, the great-grandfather. And I said, whoa, that dude's in good shape, boy. He's nice. He's a nice looking fella. I got old dogs here. I know what it takes to keep an old dog in good shape. <clears throat> and that dog did extremely well. Now, the dog that represented the Elkhounds this year at Westminster is the highest point Norwegian Elkhound in history, just so you know the great-grandfather of these guys. So that's Leaf's grandfather. Now, um, you don't actually have to take my word for it that these are pretty fair pups. You can just use that as a reference. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you take these dogs and go up the mother's side, you find even better dogs than that. You can trace these dogs up to even better dogs, and uh, you'll find uh, ex extremely high-end genetics. We may be sitting out on a mountain, we may be sitting in a snowbank in a little tiny uh, mountain home just out in the middle of nowhere, and we may not show, but that does not mean that we don't know good genetics. And that does not mean that we don't have good genetics here. Yes, these dogs are not going to have an AKC championship. This boy will treat more bears than any of his North American ancestors. He's going to work in a, in a bear rehabilitation area. He's going to work in a national park. He's going to live in a national park. He's selected because of his fearless nature, his genetics, his stability, all of his heritage. This is one of the... His, his grandfather 
just a year or two ago was hunting bear. This is a very, very, very good set of dogs for work. These dogs are the cream of the crop in all of North America right now. They're extremely good. So yes, you can, you can believe what I say or you can look at what the judges say about some of the ancestors of these dogs and the heritage of these dogs. As, as kind of reference to give you some backup material. But I thought it was very, very cool that the old boy that was at that show, he was nine and a half. The grandfather of these pups is standing outside the kennel He's hiking with me to 5,000 feet yet in the winter, and he's 12 and a half. And uh, pretty, pretty incredible that the other grandfather on the, on the mother's side, so Tecla's dad, Bram, he's coming into his 12th year, and he's still hiking.